Hey guys, it's David East. In this video, we're going to go over one of the little used features in Less, which are recursive mixins. Recursive mixins are pretty useful. With just a bit of math, we can generate out an entire grid system. Recursive mixins can seem a little confusing at first, but once you get the hang of them, they're pretty easy to use. If you want to follow along with the code, I recommend cloning the GitHub repo and then using the gulp task to compile the less files, which will compile every single time that they change. The task will also spin up a little server that'll run the demo page. You can check out the readme for more setup instructions. A mixin itself is a way to encapsulate reusable properties. In this case, this mixin will allow us to create a square with just one property for the size rather than for both height and width. So mixins are kind of like functions. And recursion is when a function calls itself. Within the mixin, we're calling it again. And in this case, it will infinitely recurse because there's nothing that will stop it. We need to set up a limit so the recursion stops at a specific point. Less has a feature called guards. Guards allow us to protect the input that's passed into a mixin. In this case, we'll make sure that the mixin stops executing when the size gets greater than 200. After the input is specified, we can type when, and then inside of these parentheses, we can do our check. In this case, when size is less than 200, it'll keep calling the mixin. Now we can go and create a class of box, and then within this box, we'll call the mixin. And if we were to run it at this point, it would still infinitely recurse. And that's because when we're calling the recursive part of the mixin, we're not adding to the size. Every time you recurse, you need to increment or decrement depending on the direction that you're going. In this case, we'll just increase by 50 pixels every single time this mixin is called. When it hits 200, it'll break. Now to get this to compile, we're going to use gulp. In the command line in our working directory, we'll just type gulp. Now every single time our less file changes, it'll recompile. And the file it compiles out to is underneath the dist folder, and that is main.css. This is what our recursive mixin compiles out to. It's not really useful, it's just height and width repeated. Now that we know how the recursion works, let's do something a bit more powerful, like generating out a responsive grid system. Now the grid system we're going to make isn't going to be anything amazing, but it will give us a good idea of how we use recursive mixins. Grid systems are made up of a set of columns. The mixin that we're going to make is going to recurse for the amount of columns that are in the grid system. We'll call this mixin generate columns. The first parameter it'll take in is the width of the container. Then it'll take in the number of columns in the grid system. And lastly, it'll take in an incrementer, which will set a default to start at 1. This incrementer is what we're going to increase to keep recursing through our mixin. Now we'll set up our guard. And we'll do this as long as our incrementer is less than the amount of columns. And before we set up the width of the column, we'll set up the recursive part. We can carry the container width over, as well as the number of columns. But now we're going to increment the incrementer by 1. So this mixin is all set up to recurse. We just need to calculate the width of each column. The goal is to make up 12 classes that will make up the grid system. Right now this code won't create any additional classes. It will just keep appending values inside of the single class. Unless we can use a special syntax to create classes dynamically. Inside these braces, we can provide our class name. And in this case, since it's a variable, we're just going to use the incrementer. Now when the mixin is called, we'll create a new class for every single time we recurse through. Now we need to calculate the width of the column. And to do that, we need to know a couple of things. First, we need to know the width of the container, which is one of the parameters. Then we need to know the width of a single column. And then we need to know the current row number that we're calculating for. So we'll create a variable for the single width. And that's just the container width divided by the total number of columns. Now the width is just the column number times the width of the single row. So let's use some numbers to help explain this. So let's say we have a 1200 pixel wide grid. And we have 12 columns in our grid. And the current column we're calculating for is the eighth column. In this case, the single width will be 100 pixels. And then 8 times 100 is just 800 pixels. 
Now when we recurse, we'll increment 8 to 9, and it'll follow the same process to 900 pixels all the way up to 1200 pixels. To generate the grid, we just need to call the mixin. We'll pass in 1200 pixels and 12 columns. We don't need to pass in the incrementer because we have the default value of 1. Now let's check out our main CSS. And within there, we see we have call 1 through 12, and each one is a multiple of 100 pixels. And this will work with any size grid. We can change this to 960. And that generates out to the right column sizes as well. Now this is really awesome, but it's not a responsive grid. Now that we're able to calculate the grid for any given container, we can use media queries to change the grid widths depending on the screen size. To do this, we're going to take a bit of code from Twitter Bootstrap. The first bit we're using is the container fixed mixin. We use this to make the containers for our grid system. The next bit we're using are the variables for the container sizes. This will let us write the media queries for the different device sizes. To create the responsive grid system, we're going to target a couple of screen sizes with media queries. We'll set the specific column sizes for each one of those media queries as well. In each one of these containers will be the extra small, small, medium, and large. We need to specify these media queries for each size, so it makes sense to turn this into a mixin. Within this media query, we can call a generate columns mixin. We'll use the grid columns variable that we have in the variables.less file, and we'll pass through the container width. And since these are mixins, let's move these over to the mixin file. Let's import our variables as well as our mixins. Now that we have the make grid mixin, let's specify it for each column size. We'll put everything inside of a container class. And the last thing we need to do before we compile is set the styles for each column class. We'll need to float each one to the left. That way they'll be in line with each other. And also we're going to provide a default width of 100%. And when the screen size gets really small, it'll fall back to this 100% width. And we actually need to call the container fixed mixin. And one last thing we need to do is we need to switch these parameters. We're providing the grid columns first, rather than the container's width. So now let's check our main.css. And in there, there's a container as well as media queries for each device size. Now if we open up index.html, this is a little demo that showcases our grid system. Down in the body, we have two containers. The first is four column threes, and they should all be on one line. And the second is a column nine and a column three. To check this out, we'll go to localhost 8080. So this is our grid system. Let's test its responsiveness. We'll open up the Chrome Dev Tools and dock it to the right. And as we make it smaller, we should notice that the sizes start getting smaller as well. And when we get small enough, it falls back to the 100%. We learned that a recursive mixin is just a mixin that calls itself. We can keep it from infinitely recursing by setting up a guard. Using this recursive mixin, we were able to calculate a grid system. When we placed it inside of media queries, we created a responsive grid system. At the beginning, it seemed like a lot to make an entire responsive grid system. But if we use the proper tools and break it down into small pieces, it becomes much easier. So just like always, if you have any questions or want something explained in more detail, feel free to leave a comment or you can hit me up on Twitter.